Genesis 35 Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and live there, and make an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household, and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods which are among you, and cleanse yourselves, and change your garments. And let us arise, and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods which they had, and the rings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was near Shechem. Then they journeyed on, and there was a terror from God upon the cities which were around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is, Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And he built an altar there, and called the place El Bethel, because there God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. Then Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried below Bethel under the oak, and it was named Alan Bakuth. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram, and he blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. Thus he called his name Israel. God also said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and an assembly of nations shall come from you, and kings shall come forth from your loins. In the land which I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I will give it to you, and I will give the land to your seed after you. Then God went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he had spoken with him, a pillar of stone, and he poured out a drink offering on it, he also poured oil on it. So Jacob named the place where God had spoken with him, Bethel. Then they journeyed from Bethel, and there was still some distance to go to Ephrath. And Rachel gave birth, and she suffered severely in her labor. Now it happened that when she was in severe labor, the midwife said to her, Do not fear, for now you have another son. Now it happened, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she named him Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar over her grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. Then Israel journeyed on and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Eder. Now it happened while Israel was dwelling in that land, that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. And there were twelve sons of Jacob, the sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, then Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, and the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's servant woman, Dan, and Naphtali, and the sons of Zilpah, Leah's servant woman, Gad, and Asher. These are the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. And Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre of Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had sojourned. Now the days of Isaac were one hundred and eighty years. And Isaac breathed his last, and died, and was gathered to his people, an old man and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Genesis 36 Now these are the generations of Esau, that is, Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Ohelabama, the daughter of Anna, and the granddaughter of Zibion the Hivite. Also Basemath, Ishmael's daughter, the sister of Nebaioth. And Adah bore Eliphaz to Esau, and Basemath bore Ruel. And Ohelabama bore Jeush, and Jalam, and Korah. These are the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, and his sons, and his daughters, and all his household, and his livestock, and all his cattle, and all his acquired goods, which he had accumulated in the land of Canaan. And he went to a land away from his brother Jacob. For their possessions had become too great for them to live together, and the land where they sojourned could not sustain them because of their livestock. So Esau lived in the hill country of Seir. Esau is Edom. These then are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, the son of Esau's wife, Adah. Ruel, the son of Esau's wife, Basemath. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, and Gatam, and Kenaz. Timnah was a concubine of Esau's son Eliphaz, and she bore Amalek to Eliphaz. These are the sons of Esau's wife, Adah. These are the sons of Ruel, Nahath, and Zerah. 
Shammah, and Mitzah. These were the sons of Esau's wife, Basemath. These were the sons of Esau's wife, Ohelabama, the daughter of Anah and the granddaughter of Zibion. She bore to Esau, Jeush, and Jalam, and Korah. These are the chiefs of the sons of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau, are chief Teman, chief Omar, chief Zepho, chief Kenaz, chief Korah, chief Gatam, chief Amalek. These are the chiefs descended from Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Adah. These are the sons of Ruel, Esau's son, chief Nahath, chief Zerah, chief Shammah, chief Mitzah. These are the chiefs descended from Ruel in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Esau's wife, Basemath. These are the sons of Esau's wife, Ohelabama, chief Jeush, chief Jalam, chief Korah. These are the chiefs descended from Esau's wife, Ohelabama, the daughter of Anah. These are the sons of Esau, that is, Edom, and these are their chiefs. These are the sons of Sire the Horite, the inhabitants of the land, Lotan and Shobal, Zibion and Anah, and Dishan and Ezer and Dishan. These are the chiefs descended from the Horites, the sons of Sire in the land of Edom. The sons of Lotan were Horai, Hemam, and Lotan's sister was Timnah. These are the sons of Shobal, Alvin, Manahath, and Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These are the sons of Zibion. Ai, Anahi, is the Anna who found the hot springs in the wilderness when he was pasturing the donkeys of his father Zibion. These are the children of Anna, Dishon and Ohilabama, the daughter of Anna. These are the sons of Dishon, Hemdan and Eshban and Ithran and Cheran. These are the sons of Ezer, Bilhan and Zavan and Akan. These are the sons of Dishan, Uz and Aran. These are the chiefs of the Horites, Chief Lotan, Chief Shobal, Chief Zibion, Chief Anah, Chief Dishan, Chief Ezer, Chief Dishan. These are the chiefs descended from the Horites, according to their various chiefs in the land of Sire. Now these are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king of the sons of Israel reigned. And Bela, the son of Beor, became king in Edom, and the name of his city was Dinhabah. Then Bela died, and Jobab, the son of Zerah, and Batzrah, became king in his place. Then Jobab died, and Husham of the land of the Temanites became king in his place. Then Husham died, and Hadad, the son of Bedad, who struck down Midian in the field of Moab, became king in his place, and the name of his city was Avith. Then Hadad died, and Semla, Mazrekah, became king in his place. Then Semla died, and Shaul of Rehoboth, on the river became king in his place. Then Shaul died, and Baal Hanan the son of Akbor became king in his place. Then Baal Hanan the son of Akbor died, and Hadar became king in his place. And the name of his city was Pau, and his wife's name was Mahetabel, the daughter of Matred, daughter of Metzhab. Now these are the names of the chiefs descended from Esau, according to their families and their places, by their names, Chief Timna, Chief Alva, Chief Jeheth, Chief Ohelabama, Chief Elah, Chief Pinan, Chief Kenaz, Chief Taman, Chief Mibzar, Chief Magdil, Chief Iram. These are the chiefs of Edom, that is, Esau, the father of the Edomites, according to their places of habitation in the land of their possession. Mark 6 And Jesus went out from there and came into his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many listeners were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things, and what is this wisdom given to this man, and such miracles as these performed by his hand? Is this man not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were taking offense at him. And Jesus was saying to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his own relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no miracle there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he was marveling at their unbelief. And he was going around the villages teaching. And he summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs, and was giving them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them that they should take nothing for their journey, except a staff only, no bread, no bag, no money in their belt, but to wear sandals, and he added, Do not put on two tunics. 
And he was saying to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave town. In any place that does not receive you or listen to you, as you go out from there, shake the dust off the soles of your feet for a testimony against them. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they were casting out many demons and were anointing with oil many sick people and healing them. And King Herod heard it, for his name had become well known, and people were saying, John the Baptist is risen from the dead, and that is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others were saying, He is Elijah. And others were saying, He is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard it, he kept saying, John, whom I beheaded, has risen. For Herod himself had sent and had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Now Herodias was holding a grudge against him and was wanting to put him to death and was not able. For Herod was afraid of John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he was keeping him safe. And when he heard him, he was very perplexed, but he used to enjoy listening to him. And a strategic day came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his great men and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. And when the daughter of Herodias herself came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask for me whatever you want, and I will give it to you. And he swore to her, Whatever you ask of me, I will give it to you, up to half my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And immediately she came in a hurry to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And although the king was very sorry, yet because of his oaths and because of his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded him to bring back his head. And he went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard this, they came and took away his body and laid it in a tomb. And the apostles gathered together with Jesus, and they reported to him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For there were many people coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. And the people saw them going, and many recognized them, and ran there together on foot from all the cities, and got there ahead of them. And when Jesus went ashore, he saw a large crowd, And he felt compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it was already quite late, his disciples came to him and began saying, This place is desolate, and it is already quite late. Send them away, so that they may go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and spend two hundred denarii on bread and give them something to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go look. And when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. And he commanded them all to sit down by groups on the green grass. And they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up toward heaven, he blessed the food and broke the loaves. And he kept giving them to the disciples to set before them. And he divided up the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up twelve baskets of the broken pieces and also of the fish. And there were five thousand men who ate the loaves. And immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of Bethsaida, while he himself was sending the crowd away. And after bidding them farewell, he left for the mountain to pray. And when it was evening, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. And seeing them straining at the oars, for the wind was against them, At about the fourth watch of the night he came to them, walking on the sea, and he was intending to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke with them and said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind stopped, and they were utterly amazed. For they had not gained any insight about the loaves, but their heart was hardened. And when they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him and ran about that whole region and began to carry here and there on their mats those who were sick, 
to the place they heard he was. And wherever he was entering villages or cities or countryside, they were laying the sick in the marketplaces and pleading with him that they might just touch the fringe of his garment, and as many as touched it were being saved from their sicknesses. Job 2 Again it was the day that the sons of God came to stand before Yahweh, and Satan also came among them to stand himself before Yahweh. And Yahweh said to Satan, Where do you come from? Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, From roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. And Yahweh said to Satan, Have you set your heart upon my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. And he still holds fast his integrity. So you incited me against him to swallow him up in vain. Satan answered Yahweh and said, Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has he will give for his life. However, send forth your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh. He will curse you in your face. So Yahweh said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, only spare his life. Then Satan went out from the presence of Yahweh and struck Job with terrible boils from the sole of his foot to the top of his head. And he took a potsherd to scrape himself while he was sitting among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the wickedly foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept calamity? In all this Job did not sin with his lips. Then Job's three friends heard of all this calamity that had come upon him. So they came each one from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite. And they made an appointment together to come to console him and comfort him. Then they lifted up their eyes at a distance and did not recognize him. And they lifted up their voices and wept. And each one of them tore his robe, and they threw dust over their heads toward the sky. Then they sat down on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights, with no one speaking a word to him, for they saw that his pain was very great. Romans 6 What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been justified from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its lusts. And do not go on presenting your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? May it never be. Do you not know that when you go on presenting yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness? But thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, you obeyed from the heart that pattern of teachings to which you were given over, and having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to further lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Therefore, what benefit were you then having from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, 
you have your benefit, leading to sanctification in the end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gracious gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord.